Welcome to our BioTrack THC instructional video series. This is BioTrack Basics, receiving a manifest of cannabis products. Let's talk terminology real quick. Manifest in BioTrack speak is sort of like a packing slip. It's a regulatory document providing specific batch and product information about the cannabis transfer. The next term that I would like to discuss is transfer. Transfer is the process in BioTrack from which you either send out or received in cannabis product. Hey guys, let's jump right into transfers. So what I'm going to be showing you today is receiving a transfer of cannabis products. Now, before we get started, you should have a couple of pieces of information in front of you. The first thing in front of you should be the manifest for the cannabis transfer. The next thing that we're going to be looking for is the invoice from the vendor that you got the product from. Once you have both pieces of information in front of you, we're going to start in BioTrack by going over to our shortcuts menu. This is all the way on your right hand side of the screen and we're going to click on transfer inventory. In this case, we're expecting a shipment transferred into us, so I'm expecting an inbound shipment on top is what we're going to pick all of the shipments that have not only been manifested but also transferred to our location. If you have the manifest but you do not see the transfer in this inbound shipment screen, what that means is that the company sending you the product forgot to do the transfer part. So you want to give them a call and ask them to please send the transfer through. Once they've sent the transfer through on their end, you'll see that shipment come right in here. Manifest ID will match. Um, so we're going to look on this to match our manifest ID, which is this Pecos Valley. It is important to know you cannot receive multiple shipments at once. As you see, when I click on each of these, the other one is unclicked, and the last one clicked on is the one that we will be able to process when we click OK. So we are looking to process this shipment. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. This is taking us to the inventory transfer screen. I'm going to expand this a little bit so that we can see all of the information. So we're going to start at the top of our list. And the reason why this exists is because this allows us to match this product, this product here that came from our, um, our vendor to this new product, which is how this product from our vendor is called in our system. This is because of track and traceability. Every cannabis product needs to be tracked from seed to sale. So by doing that, the product needs to exist in our original vendor's um, inventory, and it is called whatever our vendor likes to call it to keep track of their inventory. That being said, we're a different company and we track things a little different, so we'll have a different product. This process is matching the product from the vendor to the product that our store or our location sells it as. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to verify the quantity. Okay, yes, we did get 10. Then we're going to come over here to cost, and the cost is going to be the cost for all 10 units. So I'm going to type that in here, and then the new product we're going to start typing in how this can of brownie 100 milligram is in our system. In our system, it's this PVP 100 hybrid brownie. So we're going to go ahead and hit save. That's going to jump us down to item two on our list. And this should match your manifest perfectly. Um, we're going to do the same thing. As you can see, this is the exact same product, but the ID number is a little different because it's a different batch. So again, we're going to verify that we got 10. We're going to come over to our cost and enter the cost of the 10. And then our new product, we're going to type in what that product looks like in our computer system. And then click Save. Same thing with the next one. Enter our cost. Find it in our system. I'm going to show you on the next one. So let's say on this salve that we only got... 10. Um, so we'll just go over to our quantity, highlight it, and put in 10. We're going to come over to our cost, and we're going to fill that in. 
Um, hold on one second. Okay. Our invoice, it says 330. And the product is going to be this guy here. We're going to save. Um, and let's say the employee comes back to me a few minutes later and says, oh, I found it. It was in the second box. Well, we can just go right back. So we're highlighted on the item that we need to adjust. We're going to come in here to quantity, and we're going to change the quantity to 11 because they found the extra one. We're going to go ahead and click save, and it is going to update it. Um, then here we've got... This next one, let's just do a little bit of math real quick. Okay, and we're gonna find the product in our system. There we go, and save. All right, now we've got a chocolate bar, got the cost entered, some milk chocolate bar, save. Another one, save. Now we've got our monster cookies. Go ahead and we're gonna just keep going with this. The nice thing about this shipment was that everything came in perfectly, so that makes it really easy. That is not always the case. If you do um, find that you're short a product, you do wanna make sure you're changing the quantity here so that you can send the missing quantity back to the vendor and um, we're keeping up with the track and trace. You don't want to adjust your numbers down um, because somehow that um, extra product that you're missing, your um, vendor should still have. And so by sending it back to them, then they still have the traceability for it. And if for some reason it did go missing along the delivery process, that sort of lets them know they need to do some looking into things. Um, now this product, uh, is a brand new product for our system. And because we've never had this product in before, uh, you'll see if I start typing, I don't see anything that matches it. So I'm just going to take a step back. I'm going to click on one of these other items and click back onto it. And you'll see the product information filled itself back out. So when we get a brand new product, what my suggestion is, is to leave the product as what our vendor called it. And then I will show you how we can go and update it so that it matches our system. So the cost, we're going to enter that. And then we're going to enter this. And this again, we also don't have going to just double check. Um, if you're not using the accounting version of this software, this isn't as big of a deal, but it's always good to just verify and make sure that your numbers jive. Yep, and they do. And then we're going to set the method of payment if we have it. Um, this was paid. And if there's any tax, you just need to fill that out. And then we're all set. We're going to make sure all of these items are checked. Like I said, you can always go back and change anything, um, but there's nothing that we need to change in this instance. So we're just gonna go ahead and say, okay. This is now processing this transaction. It is remapping the products from our vendor to how they are called in our system, what I like to call a product template that we've created in our system. Now it says the transfer was successfully processed. We'll click OK, and it will have transferred all of our items to this bulk inventory room. So now we're just uh, waiting a little bit for Biotrack to go ahead and load the information. You can see sometimes it's a little slow. I've got this sort of spinning wheel that it's thinking. OK. Thank you for watching our video, Biotrack Basics, Receiving a Manifest. Check out my other videos for instructions on updating product templates for those new items.